Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Bite Size tutorial. In today's video, you'll be learning how to grab data from an online API using Unity web requests so that you can use that data in your game however you like. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So the setup for the scene is quite simple. We've got a canvas and then just some text here, the sample text. And in the canvas, we've got a script called web request example and it's empty. Let's start coding. So the first thing is that we're going to need an actual API to use. So I've just found a simple online API that requires no key, so it's really simple. Okay, you just go to this URL, agefi.io, question mark name equals the name you want, and it'll take you to this, you get some data back. So we need to write some code that will allow us to put in whatever name we want here, like my name, okay, so put Nathan in, okay, and it's gonna give us back a string name, a string, uh, sorry, an int age and an int count. So we need to take this entire thing, which is currently just a string, Okay, it's going to come over the network, over the request. We're going to get string back in our code. We want to convert that into a custom model that has a string and two ints. Then we can actually access these values and use them however we want in our code. So the first step is to make sure we have reference to a text element so that we can actually go, you know, set some text in the UI here, the sample text. And then we also want a string so that while we're running, I can just change the name and do another request. And then, as I said, when we do our request, it's just going to give us back a string. We need an actual model to turn it into so that we can use it in C-sharp. So here's the prediction model. That's a string for the name, an int for the age, and an int for the count. Now, to actually request the data and get a response, we're going to use a coroutine. The reason being, it can take longer than one frame. Obviously, we have to do a request to the API, grab the data, bring it back. That will take longer than one frame of your game. So if you don't use a coroutine, it will basically freeze. It will pause your game until we get that response. So using a coroutine means that we can every single frame basically check back to see if we've got our data. As soon as we have, we can then continue. So to do that, we're going to now make a scope for our request, okay? So we'll say using unity web request, okay? We'll call it web request, so that's the name of our variable, equals unity web request dot get, so we're doing a get request, and then our URL. So I'm obviously gonna just go quickly grab this string. So here's the string, HTTPS, api.agify.io question mark name equals and then the name so i'm using this here okay the dollar with the curly braces so instead of a like hard coded string it's just going to use this my name variable then we go to the end and we're going to add the brackets and now we are here we can't use the simplified version that it tells us about because unity is not using the latest version of c sharp so you can't actually use it even though it tells you that you can if you let it happen and go back into unity you'll get errors so just believe me, and use the brackets and curly braces way. It's a tiny bit more code, but it's, it's the only way it's gonna work. And now we actually want to do the web request. So we'll say yield return web request dot send web request. And the reason we do this, or well, what this actually does, is it means that as soon as we hit this line, we'll do our web request, and then we'll stop there for this frame. And then next frame, we'll come back here and we'll be like, okay, is the web request done? If so, move on, if not, keep going. So this is gonna keep going and going and going. And then as soon as we've got our response, down here, we can then convert that into our prediction model. So var prediction equals, and then we're gonna use JSON utility dot, okay? And we're gonna say from JSON. So JSON is the you know data format that we're bringing in. It's string, but it's formatted in a way that we can actually read it, or that C sharp can read it. And then we're gonna say the actual type that we want to turn it into, which is a prediction. And then the string JSON data, which is in our web request dot download handler, dot text okay so that text variable here is actually going to be the same as this okay so we're getting this text back and it's converting it from this into this model okay and because this model is valid it will work okay now technically after you've done your request you should write some code to check you know the error code or the success code to do stuff accordingly but i'm just going to assume for this that it will work because it will work for this uh, but obviously if the you know the API is down or something, then there will be a problem. Or if you've you know got something wrong in your URL, there'll be a problem with the request. So you do need to catch those things just in case. And then finally, we actually want to take that data and display it in the UI however we want. So I'm gonna say text.text .text equals, and then we'll just put in some string. So we can just say name, comma, your age, oh, I, I predict, because it's a prediction. Okay, so I predict your age is, and then we can say prediction dot age. And obviously the name in the prediction is the same as the name at the top, but I'm just gonna use it anyway. And the count isn't really useful here, okay? So we're basically saying, go get some data from an online API and use it in our game, okay? So this data is no longer inside our game. It's actually grabbing it elsewhere. 
Um, obviously you need an internet connection for this to work. And then what we want to do is we want to do it on start. So we'll say start. Uh, and we'll also make another method we can call inside Unity by, via clicking on our script. We'll make a, bu a button. So private void get request. And all that's going to do is it's going to start the coroutine get request coroutine. And then for this to be called in Unity, we have to add this thing called the context menu and give it a name, get request. Okay, and if we just call this method in start, it makes our lives easier. There we go. So on start, we'll do a get request. And by doing a get request, we start the coroutine. And by doing this context menu, it means if we head over to Unity, I can right click on the script and do a get request. Now, it actually gave us an error because I just tried to do it and we don't have the text set and the name isn't set. So let's drag in the text and give a name Nathan. And then technically, yeah, for this, uh, you don't actually need to be running the game, though obviously it works when you're running, let's just do it anyway. Nathan, I predict your age is 35. Well, they're wrong, but obviously it's just a random like thing. If you keep doing it, it doesn't just give you random numbers, it is a genuine thing going off data. But if I then put in another name like Bob, okay, whoops, didn't mean to save. If I right click on the script to get request, Bob, I predict your age is 51, okay. How about Jack, get request, 54, okay. David, get request, 32. This kind of thing, okay. I actually spelled the name wrong there. David, go again. 52. So that's basically it, to be honest. So we're basically saying um, do a web request with this API, okay, or with this string, this URL. Whatever the data we get back is, try and convert it to a prediction. With this prediction, we can then access the name, the age, and the count, or whatever. Okay, and you can do this and take this and do this with any API. Now, certain APIs require a key for you to actually use it, but it's not very hard. All you have to do is usually make an account, you get a key, and then you just basically send your key in the URL. So whatever your key is, you just add it on at the end or something. It'll tell you on the API. It really depends on what you're using. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's kind of an intermediate video. We just got some coroutines, web request APIs, you know, a bit more technical terminology. So it's not really for absolute beginners, but if you are a beginner and you're watching and you followed along, let me know down below. If you liked the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. It would help a lot. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Jay Colby, LN, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Zamran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bird or Die, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yuri Sletter, Rene, Remy Baldwin, and Jay Donald. If anyone else is able to help support the channel entirely, a link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.